Hello and welcome back. It is April 22nd, uh, Earth Day. And hopefully you're doing something to celebrate, becoming more knowledgeable about this planet that we all share. I am here today uh, to point out that spring is, is unpredictable. You can see there's fresh snow on the ground here. I'm imagining this might be the last snow that we get, but it's often mid-May when we have our last frost here in Ottawa. I've been watching the, the trees bud on these plants behind me in the distance there. And I've really been focused this year closely on what's happening with the trees. Um, so we started by noticing the buds that came out. You can see that in just a couple of weeks, uh, those initial flowers that were on the maple that we talked about have now started to become seeds and they're developing. You can recognize those helicopters that maybe you see flying around in the fall. Uh, so, and you can see that here in this picture. Now, there are also quite a few flowers out on the, the bushes and even coming up out of the ground. Uh, if you head out into the forest, you'll see wildflowers at this time of year. So there's a lot going on. We've checked in with each of the center staff to have them sort of update what's going on uh, with things that they talked about before. Uh, Kathleen sent me this video clip when she was out in the forest and looking for morning cloaks. You can see they're gathering here on this stump. So there's definitely a lot more activity out there. So let's check in with the staff at the Outdoor Ed Centers and see what's happening there. It's been a few weeks since our last video and I'm here to see if there's any new insect activity. So as I was walking along, I noticed that there was a great big puddle of water in the forest where I am right now and that caught my attention as I was looking closer I saw a cluster of tiny black objects wiggling around close to the surface of the water. Now these creatures are small like the springtails that we looked closely at in the first video but they're different. These are actually mosquito larvae and they will soon emerge as adult mosquitoes and you probably have interacted with one of the female adult mosquitoes that are really pesky and will land on you and bite you. From this pond, thousands and thousands of adult mosquitoes will emerge. All right, friends, uh, April 7th here in the McSkimming Forest and another sign of spring. Uh, we talked a little bit about our frogs, some of our amphibians waking up and they are in full force as well right now. But today, one of our reptiles, uh, Eastern Garter Snake, black and yellow, long skinny body. This one has woken up a little bit more while being in my hands and we've discovered their hibernaculum so that's where they spend the winter and now that it's a nice sunny day they're starting to emerge there was three to begin with one has gone back into the hole just at the base of this tree we'll try to show it to you in a minute um, and so they're coming out they are trying to get their warmth from the sun um, and obviously right now from my hand very much enjoying it uh, wrapping itself around me a little bit they're not concerned Restrictors. It's just how it's kind of hanging on because I think it knows that the ground is a little distance away. So pretty cool reptile, Eastern Garter Snake waking up. Uh, another sign of spring. So we can see if it wants to go back into its hibernaculum or its hole in the ground. We discovered one of its friends um, just at the base of this tree beyond this mossy patch. There's a hole and it went right into it. But they will just kind of hang out in the sun. Oh, this one might not be too scared right now. When you see their tongues kind of flicker out of their mouth, they're actually trying to sense what's around them and smell what's around them. So lots of um, movement trying to figure out if we're dangerous or not. Obviously not so scared that it needs to go back into its hibernaculum right now, um, but really, really great. So there'll be um, maybe an old squirrel or chipmunk hole or something else that's burrowed out a hole underneath here, and they'll all be living in there uh, under the ground somewhere here. So cool. One of the signs of spring that we are just starting to notice is that when you're out in the forest where there's logs, if you turn them over like this, gently, you might find underneath that salamanders have started to move around. Now it's still pretty chilly for them, so they're a little bit slow until they warm up in your hand. So uh, this salamander was not moving very much and he was actually laying on his back but when I picked him up and put him in my warm hand uh, he started to move around 
So salamanders will spend the winter in deep in the soil or hiding in the debris on the forest floor. And uh, when it, the temperature starts to warm, then they'll start to move around again. And they like to live uh, and hide underneath fallen logs. So when you turn them over, you look around, see if you can see them moving around. And then when you're done, we just flip it back over gently, just so anything that lives under there can still uh, survive. Welcome back friends to the pond at the Bill Mason Centre where the ice has melted and so much has happened since we last visited the pond with you. When I visited the pond just before spring break began, I noticed that there were still a few frogs calling, but there were already egg masses here in the pond. So just ahead of me out here, I can tell and I can see these gelatinous globs, shall we say, for lack of better words. And I know that in those globs there are hundreds of little eggs. You can see in this photo here that we got right after they had been laid. Now, the gobs look a little bit more gelatinous now and, and what's happening inside is that those frogs are getting ready to hatch. Normally it's about two to three weeks before the eggs hatch into tadpoles. So hopefully by next week, there'll be lots of little tadpoles swimming around this pond. So very exciting. Now, some of you had asked about the different species of frogs that we have here in Ontario and Frog Watch is a program that is put out by the Toronto Zoo and they have this poster here that shows us all the different species of frogs that we have in Ontario. We don't have all of those species here in Ontario, but we do tend to find the wood frogs like ha have laid these eggs, leopard frogs, gray tree frogs, spring peepers, American toads, bullfrogs, and green frogs. We find all of those at the centers. And earlier today, I could hear a tree frog calling. So exciting! One type of frog that we don't have is we don't have any poisonous frogs here in Ontario or in Canada. So you don't have to worry about that. I hope over the last couple of weeks, you've had a chance to observe birds. Even if you aren't really paying attention, it's kind of hard not to notice them and their presence being back in this area. I know for myself, I've been woken up the last couple mornings with the sounds of robins, northern cardinals, and doves, uh, and their calls just kind of pounding and pulsing through the windows of our house. It's a bit hard to sleep, especially if you have a crack in the window at this time of year. What birds have you been seeing and observing? I'd like to look back at this graphic that was posted by the Royal Bird Care Centre. Now, I'm sure many of you have been seeing robins and geese, but have you seen any of the other birds that are listed in this chart? I know we have seen all of these. Uh, we have Phoebes that are nesting somewhere um, in our backyard. And uh, a couple nights ago, I also got to see a great blue heron flying over our house at sunset. So I know these birds are back. Um, they're up at this point in the chart. So I think it's safe to say spring has finally arrived, even though we received a bit of snow this week. That's normal for Ottawa. Uh, and summer is on its way. Now, another thing I've started to notice about the birds in this area is that they're starting to collect materials. I've seen robins and blue jays and chickadees with pieces of uh, grass and twigs in their mouths and their beaks, and they're starting to get ready for the nesting season. Um, some birds might already have nests built. I've been observing a robin pair that's been spending time in my yard and it only took them about four or five days to go from just a couple sticks to a full uh, blown nest, which is really cool. And I'm also observing some chickadees that are making a nest in a stump that is just on the side of my house, which is really cool. So this week, I'd love to encourage you to get outside again start paying attention to the birds around you. Even take five minutes and just watch what they're doing, um, what kind of sounds they're making, where they're going, and that might lead you to a, a nesting site or give you some more ideas about what they're up to. Well, there you have it. How many of those things have you noticed happening in your neighborhood? We have salamanders and snakes throughout. 
so many more insects now. The mosquitoes are, are on their way if, you, if they haven't already found you. Uh, the trees are just filling out with leaves. Pretty soon, when we go to the forest, we won't be able to see through the canopy like we, we have been able to all winter long. Now, the observations that, that we're making and recording to you and the observations that you've been sharing with us are the kinds of things that lead to better understanding climate change. And on this day, on Earth Day, it's something to understand that looking at what's happening in your local area at one given point of time, recording that and doing that for decades and centuries even, for hundreds of years, is what gives us the information we need to understand these small systemic changes that are occurring in our environment. Uh, and this is what climate scientists are, are constantly doing. So it's invaluable. You can play a major part in that. We're all scientists if we're out there observing our world. So please take care of yourself, stay safe, and have fun continuing your explorations in your neck of the woods.